Um, this is an ASCM gathering which, in which we seek to celebrate the grace of God in our friend Peter Fenchon, a tribute service for Peter. We acknowledge the many first peoples of this land as the custodians of the land on which we meet. In my case, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. We acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging. ASCM seeks to join with the call from the heart from the Uluru Statement, a gracious process of truth-telling which aims at a voice to Parliament and ultimately a treaty. I'd also like to welcome particularly Rachel as family member. And uh, if, um, <laughs> Rachel, could you um, just say hello? <laughs> Hello. Um, yes, I'm Rachel and I'm Peter's oldest daughter. I think I know some of you and maybe many of you, um, having met you at SEM events, particularly in the 1970s, seems like a long time ago. Um, and I, uh, my brother Mark is also here. He's running under, masquerading under the banner of Robin, so he can speak after me. Um, but before I do that, I would also just like to acknowledge my mother, Christine, who isn't able to be here with us today. Um, she lives in Kew in um, Karana in a care home. Um, Dad was absolutely devoted to her. They were um, able to be in the same building, um, one floor apart, and he was able to, until really the very last days, um, get himself up in his uh, mobile wheelchair to see her every day and read with her and talk with her. Mm. Um, and so, you know, our care for our mother is ongoing and um, she was remarkably present at his very private funeral. So I think it's, a, I'd just like to register her presence and also his passing for her. Yeah. Yes. And Mark, would you like to say something? Yes. Um, so it's Mark Fencham here. I'm Peter's son. Uh, Robin is my wife and she's lent me the technology. So that's why I've got Robin on the screen. Um, so I'm sort of on the limits of my uh, technical expertise. Uh, I live in South Australia. Um, I was fortunate that earlier in the year when travel was a bit more uh, liberal, uh, I could come over to Victoria a few times and uh, visit dad and mum. Uh, and, you know, I had uh, the experience of sort of helping them move out of their apartment because dad was uh, no longer capable of uh, living there. Uh, and that was uh, pretty much a team effort for all of us kids to pack up the apartment. Uh, so my other two brothers, uh, Rod, is next oldest, he lives in Queensland, and Pat, who lives in rural Victoria. Um, so with Rachel, who lives close by to mum and dad, uh, mm -hmm. doing the lion's share of the work, we were all able to chip in. Obviously, then with um, COVID restrictions tightening, travel became a bit more difficult and we weren't physically able to be at the funeral, but we did have the privilege of uh, being able to zoom in on, on the funeral and, and I really enjoyed it as far as being able to just catch up with cousins and what have you as well. So, uh, yeah, I live in South Australia and uh, it's a privilege to be able to join everyone today. Uh, uh, if you want to ask me anything else, they can, but that's basically it in a nutshell. Thank you, Mark. Very good that you're here. Thank you. Yeah. And we'll, we'll acknowledge Rod and Pat as well. And uh, the grandchildren, Gawa, Jasper, Quilan, Queenie and Milo, Flo and Aggie, and uh, also Hema, adopted uh, member of the family. We acknowledge all those people. <laughs> um, let me just go along the list in, in front of me. And uh, well, I'm Sandy Yule and um, currently Chair of the, SCM, the National SCM. Um, yeah, Peter was the chair when I was General Secretary in the latter years. And, uh, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll speak about that more later. Uh, Duncan, Duncan Reed. Oh, okay. I'm I'm Duncan. Um, I, I I knew Peter through the SCM, um, uh, especially during the 1970s when he was very a very significant member. Um, and I'll say a little bit more about that later. Yeah. Uh, David Hook. Are you there, David? 
Hello, David. Would you like to say who you are? <laughs> Sorry, technical problems. Yeah. Okay, that's David. Um, Joe, Joe Elvins. I, I have great memories of staying with Peter and Christine twice in Brisbane together with my late husband, Weston, and have been part of the St Andrew's Uniting Church Fairfield community or congregation together with Peter in the last uh, few um, years. I took him to St Andrew's the last time he was able to be in the church community. Thank you. Uh, Graydon Henning? Um, yes, my Melbourne years were 1964 to 1972, and that's the time in which I met Peter and valued his uh, friendship enormously, but it's through ASCM and World University Service that uh, we met and worked in that context, so I'm here to pay my respects. Thank you. Uh, Mandy Tibby? Yes, Mandy Tibby from Sydney, and I knew Peter and Christine uh, through the uh, Australian Student Christian Movement annual conferences, uh, and also I had the privilege of uh, visiting them, their home, and I stayed overnight one time, um, and they were always wonderful at those conferences, both of them, so it's lovely to have this opportunity to pay tribute to Peter. Um, thank you. Glenn Howes? Hi, everybody. Glenn Howes here from Melbourne. I was involved in the SCM at Monash and then again to the 70s with um, Peter and Christine and all the things we did on the National Executive. And um, it's great also that uh, Mark and Rachel are able to join us and uh, Rod and Pat and Hema and Christine, of course, all of them here in spirit too. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Derek McDougall. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I uh, met Peter first in the um, context of the SCM at Melbourne University in the um, mid 60s. But then in more recent years, uh, as with Joe, I've known uh, Peter through the uh, uh, St Andrews congregation in um, Fairfield. Uh, so I've always admired his tremendous commitment to social justice. Ah, just as fresh in recent years as in the 60s. That's true. Thank you. And Margaret Turner? Oh, I've known Peter since the late 1950s, um, partly through my husband, Bob, who knew him earlier um, before he went to um, England. And we've kept in touch. And um, in his later years, after um, before he went to Brisbane, he was a member of the... Um, Blackburn Uniting, the Avenue Blackburn, where I attend. So I've known both of them for a long, long time. Rachel was only a baby when I first met them all. And they've been very dear friends to me. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, Brian and Renata Howe. Oh, there's Brian. Hey, Hi, Brian. He's muted. He's muted. <laughs> I mute yourself, Brian. <laughs> you, you're muted, Brian. Ah, no. oh, there you go. There you go. That now? That's better. That's good. Yes, uh, saying that uh, Renata wrote the history, of course, of the SCM and Peter uh, and Christine, but especially Peter uh, figures uh, in the index. Uh, I was just uh, checking out. Uh, I've, I've got something to say a bit later about. Uh, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Renata will no doubt say something as well. Thank you. Uh, Cherry Collins. Unmuted. Can you unmute yourself, Cherry? The little icon at the bottom of the What's screen on the left. Is 
little microphone icon somewhere. It's got a line through it. You need to click on it. <laughs> uh, Graydon, if you send, if you, as host, if you ask Cherry to unmute, she should get a pop-up pop up box that you can click on. That might help. Anyway, she's, she's given up now. <laughs> uh, moving on, Don, we'll move on to Don MacArthur. Hi, Don MacArthur from Melbourne, and I knew Peter as a senior friend from the mid '80s, mm. uh, and I'll, I'll say a bit more about that later as well. Thank you, Don, and it was your initiative that we have this event, so thank you for that very much. Thank you, um, Anne and Alan Wilkinson. Uh, thanks, Sandy. Uh, Anne and I have known Peter as a, an ASCM name for, for years, uh, but, but I had the pleasure of meeting up with him first in connection with Renata's history of, uh, of the SCM. Uh, he, he'd been involved in that since well before I became associated with it. So, so that was my, uh, my link. And then we had a little bit to do with him when he was uh, sort of Melbourne-based uh, when we had SCM gatherings here. But that's our link. Thanks very much. Cherry, are you ready to unmute? <laughs> Continuing trouble with the technology. Uh, moving on, uh, Ed and Barbara Carter. Hello, um, and Annie the dog actually as well has just popped in. Peter and Christine have been part of our lives since the early 60s when Peter was a lecturer of, um, of EDS in, at Melbourne in chemistry. And then later on um, at the Avenue Uniting Church where but again, both Peter and Christine were a formidable pair and, um, and Peter ran the adult learning uh education so and all of those all of those things that we we all did together as as part of the continuation of, of peter's passion for progressive christianity and social justice we mm. might say a bit more later thank you and john ball hello everybody and thanks for the, the initiative today um i knew peter from probably the mid 70s 75 um well, uh, particularly right up to the end of the 80s as staff, as a um, student and then short term as staff and senior friend and conferences and so on. I could say more later if you wish, but I met him, of course, in, uh, he and Christine frequently after that, but it was more, much more infrequent. Mm. We would like you to speak later, John. That's, that'll be good. Thank you. Uh, Rosemary Waring. You're muted, Rosemary. Okay, now? Yes. Yes, thank yes, you. you. Um, I knew Peter th through SCM Nationals from through this decade of the 60s. I was a very shy South Australian. I re revered him from the distance. <laughs> thank you. Robin Burns. Oh, Robin. Yes, Rosemary, yes, Andrew oh. Graydon and Sandy. <laughs> I'm a lapsed SCMA, but I mainly knew Peter through World University Service, uh, although I did get into that via the ASCM. Um, and I've been in contact with Peter again last year because of a centenary celebration of World University Service. So I'd like to speak about that again later. For sure, for sure. Thank you. Sue Parks. Are you muted, Sue? This is too early in the morning for me. I'm based in the UK these days. <clears throat> I knew Peter um, just, a, just a little, um, both through World University Service. Um, I was based in Sydney on, on their committee there and through SCM in schools um, when Peter used to attend the the national gatherings that, that uh, national committee meetings that we used to have occasionally for SCM in schools and then through national conferences. 
Mm. And I'm afraid I will have to disappear in about half an hour, but... Um, well, good, good to see you. you. Very good that you're here. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Margaret Bielan. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. It's just wonderful to see so many... I was going to say old faces. <laughs> Lovely to know that so many of you are still alive. <laughs> but so, yes, I, I first, I think, got to know Peter after 1970 when I was back in Australia and had been back for some time. But uh, we were a whole lot of people away. Uh, so it's, it's, it, um, and, but I got to know him most then, in one sense, through science education, mm -hmm. because I was in Canberra and at a new institution and we were starting science teacher education national, for Australasia, and Peter was very involved in that. And, but it, it was the, the sort of subterranean roots that came up from our connection in SEM and, and also through his connection with the Uniting Church and Wellspring and so on. And believe it or not, he continued to be an active member of the Labour Party, which I had been to. Thank you, Margaret. Thank and you. and uh, he just is a, an irreplaceable friend. She's going right. through with Christine as well. Thank you. Stephen Lavender. Hey, yes, um, <clears throat> Stephen Lavender. I knew uh, Peter most closely uh, from 74 to 76, I think it was, when he was chair and uh, I uh, was the uh, the treasurer of SCM. So uh, we had quite close contact then. Hadn't seen him much uh, since that time, but our, our most recent, more intense contact with the Fincham family was uh, uh, with Rachel's Gawa and uh, and our Greg were in the same um, uh, play group back in 1982, uh, <laughs> three or something like that, three or four. So, uh, but anyway, yes, Peter was uh, certainly an uh, inspiration and a great uh, <clears throat> leader for those uh, couple of years in which I was in, involved before I went to Korea. Thanks, Stephen. John Langmore. You're muted, John. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I, I barely knew Stephen because I always lived in uh, cities that he where he didn't live, and uh, but I have this strong impression of him as a man of great influence in the in the student Christian movement mm -hmm. and in uh, in enlightened uh, social science intellectual life in Australia in many ways. And uh, so it's with that very high respect that, that we join today. Hmm. Hello, Wendy as well. Good to see you. Oh, hello, Sandy. <laughs> I've only met Peter a few times and that was when Beth and um, Ray Melius came over from South Australia and stayed with us. And we took them out to visit. Uh -huh. And uh, we had a couple of lovely afternoon teas um, with Christine and and uh, Peter. Uh, Peter. Peter. So, so that was terrific. And I, I just being in Sydney and and away a lot in New Guinea, I didn't know him during those years when he was so active. Thank you. And uh, Rod Fincham has joined us. So, uh, Rod, welcome. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good to see you all. Uh, we're we're up in Brisbane, and my daughter and I are. Hi, Queenie. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So, you can see we're working on a woodwork project. So in I think, the spirit of Parpeet. yeah, in the spirit of Parpeet, I think uh, he'd approve. Yeah. Uh, have to say his daughter could be better at it than he was, but um, great to see you all. I remember lots of you from the past. Mm. And, um, <laughs> thank you for being here. Thanks, Rod. Uh, Claudine. Mm -hmm. She's got another turn. Uh, Claudine, are you there? Not there. Moving on, Jackie. Yeah, Patrick's there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, yes, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Jagjeet. Uh, I'm Don MacArthur's um, wife of 18 years, <laughs> uh -huh. partner of 20 years. And uh, Don always, always spoke very fondly of Peter Fensham and uh, visited them in Brisbane and stayed with them as well. And um, has always told me about how uh, amazing uh, Peter has been in the whole area of education and in SCM. So I too come here with uh, deep respect for Peter. Thank you, thank you very much. And Patrick Fensham. Hello everyone. Uh, yes, um, thank you for gathering for today for dad. And um, hi Sandy, haven't seen you for a long time. Um, <laughs> I missed the first few minutes. I haven't been around the grounds with everyone who's checked in so far, but Thank you, Sandy, uh, for making the effort to have this service. I look forward to it. Thanks, Patrick. And uh, is Faye Yule there? Faye Yule is here, two rooms away from you. <laughs> just, just making sure you were still in the room because I can only see a limited number of people on the screen. <laughs> I, I just want to say that Peter's name was a very big name in my life at a time when I didn't know him. So that when I did meet him in the early 1970s, I expected someone who would be very, very impressive, which he was, but also quite kind of remote. And he was anything but that. He was one of the best listeners I ever met. I valued his friendship, his and Christine's. And it's, it's an important time for us all to be here and pay tribute to him. Mm. So thank you. And uh, Claudine, were you wanting to say something? Well, perhaps not. In which case, uh, let me um, let me begin the service. And and Robbie also hasn't said anything. Oh, Robbie. Okay, Robbie. Yeah, sorry. Hi, Sandy. Yes, uh, so I uh, am managing the ASCM today, and was just very pleased to be able to. Uh, help uh, Sandy and, and Don uh, uh, arrange this tribute uh, to Peter, who's just such an important point of connection between uh, the ASCM uh, of, of the past and the future. So uh, uh, just really pleased to be here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Claudine has told me that she, she doesn't seem to be able to unmute, so um, we hear you. Thank you. Um, and Sandy, my uh, computer crashed just when you asked me to speak. So I missed my turn. Uh, you go ahead. Go ahead, um, I, uh, My link with Peter was when he asked me to join the group that um, was marketing Renate's centenary history. Uh -huh. And I had the pleasure of meeting Alan Wilkinson and Brian and a few other people who are <laughs> some of whom are here today. Good to hear. Thanks, David. Um, okay, let's let's move into the service properly and let us begin with prayer. So let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the fellowship of the ASCM in which we meet again today and which has nurtured us particularly in our formative years. We thank you for the combination of fellowship and challenge that it has sustained. We thank you for the lifelong friendships that it has engendered. Today, we particularly remember Peter Fincham and also Christine for their long presence in this fellowship. We thank you for Peter's life and work, even as we mourn his passing. May we be inspired by his example and encouraged by his faith. May this time of tribute bring to expression our collective appreciation of him and his contribution. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we have a reading from, that Mandy will bring to us. Thanks, Mandy. Yes, a reading from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. Then one of the lawyers who had been listening to these discussions and had noted how well he answered, came forward and asked him, which commandment is first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The lawyer said to him, well said, master, you are right in saying that God is one and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all your heart, all your understanding and all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. That is far more than any burnt offerings or sacrifices. When Jesus saw how sensibly he answered, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Thank you. Um, I'm going to take the privilege of giving the first speech and partly to follow on from the reading, because I think that that reading uh, expresses both uh, Peter's faith, but also his life, that you can see it in him. Uh, this focus on something beyond the horizon and the openness to people from other places with problems different from ours. Mm. That was what really got me. Mm. Uh, just the sense that we shouldn't be limited to our own culture and defend our own culture rather mindlessly without understanding other cultures. Mm. Uh, doesn't help you if they're aggressive to you, but uh, never mind. Uh, it's important to understand and to be guided by the Spirit of God as to what is possible. I first met Peter as a, as a speaker when I was very junior in the SCM in early 1960s, 1959 in fact. Uh, he was a fairly regular spe speaker at Melbourne University conferences and um, so that was who Peter was at that time. When I was working for the SCM in the 1970 to 75 period, um, it was a very troubled time and we were departing from the rather more comfortable Constantinian era Christian ethos at that time because we were listening to voices from other places. Uh, and Peter was a leader in that. And Peter came in at a time when most, most others in the senior ranks of senior friends were a little bit unsure about the direction it was, it was Peter that, that really stepped up to be the chairman as we were trying to navigate these rather interesting waters. There were two, there were three, two other families I'd mentioned <clears throat> to show just how few there were that really came with us on that journey. I would say Herb Feith and Betty Feith were, were one, and um, uh, David and Shirley Lancaster, who'd spent 20 years in Fiji, were another. So it's people who had had the experience outside Australia who saw uh, what the problems were and what we were on about. I was very pleased to be able to visit Peter just a few months back in his apartment and uh, share with him the vision we had, we are having for the future of SCM, which he was very pleased to hear. And he gave us his full support for the directions that we were heading in at that time. Uh, I think that's as much as I want to say, but um, just to say, Farley Peter. Um, Robin, uh, Robin Burns, I'd like you to speak next, if you would, uh, about Peter's Wuss contribution, particularly, but whatever else you want to say. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Sandy. And as a lapsed SCMer, it really is a privilege to be sharing this occasion with you. I suddenly found myself thinking, yes, lo, here is fellowship. My thanks to Helen Hill, who's just sent me a message saying she's having trouble connecting with the internet in Timor-Leste at the moment. Oh, really? mm. But she suggested this and to Sandy for his welcome. 2020 was the centenary of World University Service. And Peter contributed with alacrity to the WUS alumni volume that I was editing. He had a long history with WUS Australia ASCM was one of the two major sponsors of WUSA, and Peter was appointed by ASCM to represent them on the National Woods Executive. He became staff chair of WUSA for over a decade from the 1960s till the office moved to Canberra. For complex reasons, the organisation gradually closed down in Australia in the second half of the 70s. However, it had played an important role under Peter's leadership in the Progressive Development Assistance NGO scene in Australia. 
During Peter's period as chair, assistance to projects for students in less developed countries was a central this activity. Most fundraising in Australia took place on the eight campuses. Just fancy, only eight then. <laughs> with only one poorly paid person, keeping contact with the state branches could be difficult. The annual Miss University quest was a key fundraising activity. And as Peter wrote to me last year, in those pre-feminist days, he presided over the annual ball and presented the prizes, mentioning that he shared that with Christine, as he put it, also before her feminist awakening. Several other campuses also held a Miss University quest, and some of you may remember the annual WUS Day at ASCM National Conferences, when fundraising also took place through such creative activities as presenting David Elliard's WUS side story. I remember Peter as a strong, firm, but low key leader. There were some troubling times during his chairing, including attacks on WUS by Melbourne University's wizard, and ASCM concern over reports that WUS International had been infiltrated by the CIA. It actually had. Mm. Peter steered us carefully through these, and in addition to his role in WUS Australia, he also undertook visits on WUS business to Sri Lanka and New Delhi, as well as to the International Office in Geneva. Anyway, US was the other sponsor of WUSA, and through that, Peter connected with Tom Roper, which led to their joint work on remediation of inequalities in school education in Australia. Ahead of his time, Peter's concern with social justice and student welfare, significant issues for ASCM, WUS and NUAUS together, involved him in working on a hex-like scheme made redundant by the Whitlam government's abolition of university fees. He'd have been interested in, if not a contributor, to the Centenary WUS conference in Vienna last month. The topic, the human right to quality education within the framework of the fourth UN Sustainable Development Goal. Peter's participation in WUS exemplifies some of his key concerns and achievements. It was an excellent training for me to work with him on the WUS executive. Farewell to a highly valued person and a life well lived. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robin. Thank you. Um, I'll now call on Don MacArthur to uh, give his testimony and tribute. Thanks, Thanks Sandy. Um, so yes, my name's Don MacArthur. I was uh, a young person in 1983 when I first met people from SEM at a, a large youth conference organised by the Australian Council of Churches. and. Uh, a couple of years later, I became a, a member of the Melbourne University branch. And uh, just to set a context for what I say about Peter, um, I'll just give you a, a picture of, of something of that era, and I'll um, I'll share my my screen here. So you, you can see this. Yes. Okay. So those of you who were active in the the student side of the movement uh, at this time would remember some of these graphics and uh, and others of you who are on the, the mailing list. But um, these are some of the things that, that I encountered when I when I joined SEM, the, the National Journal Across the Currents, um, and some of the concerns that, that the movement had by the 80s, uh, mid 80s and into early 90s when I was involved. So, uh, these are some of the, the conferences and events, and I think many of you will have uh, been to, to some of these. Um, and we had this newsletter for Friends of the Movement, and uh, I just found this, this article about a Back to Chum Creek day, uh, where there was a, a, a chance for current students to, to meet with Friends of the Movement. Uh, I, I guess, Looking at these materials, I had a sense that um, maybe if I open them up, uh, I would find some references to, to Peter. And uh, I'm actually sure that they must be there, but it's not the era of being able to search um, like on the internet and, and find uh, a name. So in the many documents, uh, like by this stage, it's very much a student-led movement um, and senior friends are 
are in the background uh, to a large extent. But there is this dialogue that takes place with senior friends and this, uh, this back to Chum Creek day uh, was, was one of many. And it's in, in that kind of context that I met Peter. Mm -hmm. um, so th there we were, students in the, the SCM and meeting with people who had this amazing long history with the movement. And I think it's a very unique kind of movement. I, I don't know of any other where you have a, a student leadership, but a connection with these generations of people who identify with the movement, a part of the, the broad movement and are our senior friends. So Peter was, was one of these senior friends. So if you were around SCM at this time, then Peter was very much a, a presence. You, you would hear the name Peter Fensham and sooner or later, you, you would meet him in SCM circles. And um, I mean, this is back to the eighties. Uh, I, I don't remember specific things he said so much as a sense of a, a, a gifted leader and a gifted educator. I was thinking about how the work of SEM is, is educational in so many ways. Uh, we, we meet in the university setting, but we also educate ourselves through membership of the movement. And he was this person whose expertise was in education, leading these workshops for, for us. Uh, and you could see his gifts as, as an educator, like having been the Dean of Education at Monash and having really a, an international standing in the field of science education. Peter brought those skills and also um, well, his, his interest, his sense of the movement to a, a discussion at Chum Creek where we would sit down and hear about the history of the movement. This meant a lot at the time. So got to know Peter, got to meet him, um, got a sense of, of some of what was um, what mattered to, to him. And I, I was just looking through Google Scholar the other day and uh, I typed in Peter Fensham. And uh, well, you can see that there's 296 results uh, under, <laughs> under his name. Um, I, I, I'm sure most of them are, are his. I just scrolled and scrolled. And um, one of them jumped out at me. Uh, this was a forward to a collection of writings and he was writing about science education and science's story and how as science educators, he said, until recently, we've forgotten how story can be a powerful form of education. And he provides the instance of the story of how DNA was discovered or the story of Marie Curie. Um, so here is this, um, here is this senior friend who comes to the movement and he gives these workshops. We meet him informally. He's someone who, who made a really a, a real impression. Um, some of those slides I showed before showed concerns of um, women's issues, gender issues, racism. The environment was not such a prominent issue in the movement as I remember, but we did have a, an environment conference. The environment was Peter's uh, or a particular passion for, for Peter. And um, I just remember him beyond the SCM context of meeting at conferences and formal gatherings, um, just as someone who is generous to, to me. I, when I went to, to do a PhD, I, I went to see Peter and uh, he gave me time to sit down and talk about my ideas for a topic. Um, this is one of a number of ways I felt he was generous to, to me and that um, that mattered. So I, um, I, I miss him. I'm, I'm sad. It, 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 I haven't seen him for years, really. Um, it's great to hear some of you say that you've seen him just just recently, but I haven't seen him for years. Oh, but um, but yeah, he made this impression and that um, that mattered to, to me. Um, so it's, it's great that a lot of people have turned out today to, to mark his passing and mark his life. Thank you very much, Don. Thanks again for the initiative and uh, getting us going. That was really good and uh, we're very grateful. Uh, Helen Hill appeared in the, in the list just a minute ago, but she slipped away again. Are you there, Helen? Maybe not. Um, we'll hope she comes back. <laughs> 
Um, I'd like to ask Jo Elvins if she could speak at this point. As I said, I uh, was part of St Andrews in um, Fairfield for the last few years, together with Peter particularly, and visiting with Peter and Christine at Karana, where they were had a lovely unit. And then more recently, um, I was able, I'm able to see Christine and she likes if I'm able to take flowers because I'm there most weeks uh, as a volunteer with a Scrabble group. But people much loved Peter at St. Andrews. Um, and thinking back, he took leadership when there were some real concerns and issues at the Augustine Centre, uh, which became part also linking together with St. David's in um, Canterbury to become Habitat Uniting Church. Mm -hmm. And there'd been the sort of issues that needed leadership to, to move on into the future. So I think that's all I need to say with great memories of Peter and Christine. Thank you, Joe. Um, Duncan Reed. Thank, thank you, Sandy. Um, look, I, I uh, had most to do with Peter during uh, 1974 and 75 when I lived in the SCM house in Fitzroy. Um, and I, I should acknowledge too that um, some years later in the early 80s, I, I found myself on a committee with Christine, a, a committee of the Victorian Council of Churches. Uh, but that's that's another story. But um, uh, Peter used to come in, I think it was probably about once a month for um, SCM uh, committee meetings. I'm not sure whether it was area council or, uh, or the, the executive, but but the the meetings would be in 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 Nap the Napier Street house, um, and um, which is and he he'd come in from I think Blackburn uh, somewhere out that way, which is quite a considerable commitment, um, you know, before Eastlink was uh, operating and made it much quicker to come in, and he always came with three things. Um, he came with a very well prepared agenda for the meetings. Uh, he came with a, the second thing was a, a thoughtfully prepared meditation to start the meetings. It was never simply off the cuff or formulaic. It was, it was something that genuinely addressed the concerns of the people who are going to be at the meeting and the concerns of the meeting itself. And the third thing, which was always very welcome, he, he generally brought a bag of oranges. And this was uh, to this, this, you know, um, the, the diet at, at the Napier Street house was, house was fairly fairly basic and fairly unimaginative in many ways. And, and so the bag of oranges was also always welcome. Um, and this was a household of usually of seven to eight people. I think the most the biggest number in my time there was 10 people at one stage, but uh, it was a bit of a floating population. But uh, look, all of those things, I think, uh, point to the fact that he was very thoughtful person, very committed, very committed to what he was, uh, to his concerns, and other people have talked about that, and generous with his time and his attention. So those are the things I would like to say about Peter, and um, I'm very glad to have had the opportunity to say that at this gathering. So thank, thank you. Nathan. Thank you very much. Um, call on Glyn Howells. Thanks, Sandy, and hello, everybody, and thanks for this opportunity just to share with you briefly. Um, Peter was a rare man, one of the saints, blessed in equal measure with brilliance and humility, common sense and vision, drive and an ability to bring others on a journey. His style was informal and unpretentious, and with equanimity and the collaborative spirit, he achieved so much. Peter used all of these qualities as national chairperson of the SCM. And I've only just realized that one of my very earliest SCM involvements was connected with Peter through World University Service. Um, 
fairly early on in my first year at Monash, I found myself, I'm not sure how, sitting inside the main doors of what was then called the Union, and we were raising money for Bangladesh, which had recently um, fought the War of Independence and was a, an impoverished large population country. And um, over that uh, week or so, we played the music from the concert for Bangladesh and handed out information. And I guess Peter Fencham, and I know that was a World University Service um, event. I was with a number of you who are here today on the national executive meetings in the SCM house in Fitzroy. Um, I was there, I think for about 73, or I don't know, for quite a few years. <laughs> Probably most of the things that happened during my period in the 1970s in ASCM, including the wonderful national conferences, our involvement in social issues, the commitment to solidarity with the SCMs in the Asia Pacific region. As Sandy has mentioned, all bore the wisdom and the commitment of Peter. Even though he steered the boat so deftly that one was mostly unaware of his genius <laughs> to inspire and to make things happen. I don't think I ever saw Peter dressed formally. I never saw him in a suit and tie. Like his namesake in the Bible, Peter was a rock on whom you could always rely. I best remember Peter chatting with children and people of all ages. I remember Peter and Christine's and the families relaxed in formality, their hospitality and their openness to everyone. Vale Peter Fensham. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, John Ball. Yes, look, people have said so eloquently about Peter from their memories already, so much of the qualities that I would have said have been highlighted very well. Um, his fun, his uh, intellect, his openness to people. Um, he and Christine were very strong presences. Um, at the conferences and, and even at uh, business meetings I was at, um, but particularly I remember the conferences. And I should say um, one other aspect that people didn't mention uh, so far is the generosity of uh, uh, the Fenshams and the Lancasters in opening up their Phillip Island holiday houses to students and others uh, for meetings and for relaxation. Um, they were very, very generous uh, people. Uh, sorry, particularly Peter. I mean, Christine, of course, is still here. I haven't seen Christine or Peter. I think probably the last time was um, at a, an SCM um, day of prayer for students some years ago. Thank you, John. Yeah. Um, Brian and Renata Howe. They're muted. Are uh, you you're muted, Brian? We can't hear you. You're on mute. You need to good. unmute. Ah, good. That's good. Yes. I was saying that. Um, we did see Peter and Christine relatively recently in Brisbane, and we had some wonderful times with them uh, when we were up visiting uh, uh, our daughter in Brisbane. But the particular occasion that I recall perhaps most vividly was a conference uh, in 1975 at Ocean Grove. And people remember that 1975, uh, events of 1975 in politics were to say the least extremely dramatic. 
But what I remember about Peter and Christine was the passion that they brought to the discussion throughout that conference about what had occurred. Yeah. They yeah. mentioned the name, I remember, I looked him up uh, just a few minutes ago, Alf Conlon, who they saw as a, a Machiavellian figure, uh, very important in the whole. You know, my, I, I, I could not believe how superficial I felt in terms of my analysis of those events compared to the digging and the, the deep analysis that uh, Peter and Christine uh, brought at that conference to what was occurring. I thought it was a pretty significant event, but nowhere near as significant as Peter, uh, who uh, had really dug and thought about the issue. So he brought a passion. And mm. of course, uh, uh, he's, he's noted for his role in... Uh, the student Christian movement. I'm not sure how involved he ever was in politics, but I do know on that particular occasion, he brought a great passion and intellectual inquiry uh, that was most impressive. Mm. Uh, any more to add? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for the story. Uh, and Ed and Barbara Carter. Time to unmute, Barbara. Yes, you need to unmute. Ah, yeah, here that's we are. It. That's it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, together with, with Mark Turner, who's very quietly sitting down there at the bottom of the screen, uh, we visited Peter while he after he'd moved to the nursing home in uh, his nursing home room in Karana. He was um, struggling at the time, but he was still endlessly interested in the world and in us. And that really strong sense of the sustaining friendship that we've had through, through all of those years was, was incredibly moving to, to all three of us. And um, I don't know, I don't know what to pick out, but for me, one of the things that I remember is that whilst I was the secretary of, of Melbourne University Assembly in the late 80s, um, I asked Peter to come along and, and speak about the Dawkins so-called reforms, Dawkins, sorry, Dawkins, so-called reforms of university on the topic of, um, of uh University Education for National Economic Objectives, which of course was the, the big thing at that stage. I um, invited Peter to come along to, to Union House uh, to have lunch before he spoke at this, at this um, big meeting that I'd arranged. And uh, we lined up in front of the, of the cafeteria type uh -huh. situation in front of, um, of two professors of education, uh, sorry, two professors at Melbourne University uh, of science professors who were, who were very um, opposed to Peter, uh, Peter's views. He had offended them in some way. And they, um, I, I felt that they, they were extremely rude. Peter said, you know, that's what you, that's what you sometimes get. Don't worry about a barb, you know, um, that's what you sometimes get when you, uh, when you are prepared to stand up for unpopular causes. And um, he was completely unfazed by that. He went on and he gave a brilliant speech. We didn't get anywhere, of course, but um, it was part of Peter's move out into the, into being prepared to move out into um, uh, areas where he was a prophetic voice, I think, but not always a popular one. And um, I learned a lot from you. <laughs> Ed, Ed, I think you could probably say something about the council of the church schools. Uh, Peter, Peter was, was one of the things that we noticed most about Peter when we arrived at the Avenue Church in 1972. Um, Peter had started to organize as an alternative to sermons and our learning group. Uh, we arrived um, and Peter promptly grabbed Barb and I to join the planning committee on the adult learning group. 
that adult learning group has continued at the Avenue Church for the last 50 years, at <laughs> least. It's been a remarkable innovation within the Uniting Church. Um, and we were always terribly grateful for Peter for his leadership. When he left the church and went to Queensland and so forth, he'd pay us a visit once a year. We would always line him up to give one of his talks and he'd turn up with his butcher paper and, uh, and give us talk on whatever thing was of particular interest to him at that time. I first met Peter in 1961 when I had him as a lecturer in Chemistry 1. Uh, and so my contacts go back 60, 60 odd years. And it, it, his influence and interest in all sorts of things has been quite remarkable, mm -hmm. which I am eternally grateful. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ed and Barbara. Uh, we're now going to move to a minute silence. And um, perhaps if we could mute everybody for that minute silence um, and um, just hold them. So let's uh, remember, Peter, all the things that have been said about him and all our own memories of him and Christine in silence. Amen. <laughs> Bale, Peter. <clears throat> um, the, um, there are a number of people who've apologised for not being able to be present at this meeting. I won't go through the names, but there, there are quite a significant number, about 15 or so. Um, and uh, there are a few who've joined us who weren't here at the start. I, I noticed Chris, um, Chris Ledger. Would you like to say hello, Chris? Yes, I certainly would. And I'm so and sorry, I'm, I'm so late. sorry, I'm late. Um, I um, simply lost track, track of the time. And when I realised, yeah, when when I realized, realized it was six o'clock, I was, I, I was, I think, myself. So I, so I joined you just a few minutes ago. Am I echoing? Yeah, you were, yes. You're just stopping. Yes, yes stop it's okay now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, Yes, I was just saying I'm very sorry I'm I'm late. No I, worries, it's happened. I like saving must have tricked me. I just lost track of the time. Bad luck. Um, yeah, but um, I'm so glad to see so many people here gathered to remember Peter. And if I could just simply say he had a profound effect on me. Um, he was chair of SCM when I was a science student. And it was SCM and Peter's influence in particular that really set me off on a path of science, technology and society studies. And um, um, yeah, he was a, an extraordinary, extraordinarily supportive um, senior friend and person. And um, yeah, I just wanted to say that and to give no, my you. condolences to the family mm -hmm. and to the movement. Mm -hmm. for, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Francis Ford, do you, would you like to say something? Thanks, Sandy. I was one of the ones who apologised in advance because I was going to be travelling from Ballarat to Bendigo while this was on. So I've just I just snuck in in time to hear John talk about um, Phillip Island, and which was 
and I'm, and I'm not sure everything that was, was said before that, but certainly for me, lots and lots of memories right through the 80s, lots of national conferences, lots of lovely conversations, and, and certainly the generosity that's already been mentioned in terms of sharing the houses, the Fensions and Lancasters at Phillip Island. There were some very special um, weekend camps and retreats um, through the certainly the first part of the 80s um, at Phillip Island, and that was made possible by the generosity of Peter and family. So thank you. Thanks, Francis. And uh, lovely to see faces that I haven't seen in some cases for a very long time. So. Uh, Janet Baxana. Can you unmute Janet? Hello? Right. Hello. Can you see me? Yes, can we you can. Know? Yes. Good. We can't see you. Can't see you, but we can hear you. Oh, that's a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, uh, yes, I, I was on the staff working with schools in the mid 1960s, which takes you back, but I was aware of um, Peter and Helen Hill and others uh, being very active at Monash University. Um, and I was aware of his leadership. Um, I then went back to teaching. Um, but um, I was looking back over notes of, for example, a schools conference that was held in Canberra um, on the subject of world development. Tony Delaporte might have been, probably was involved in helping to organise that. Um, uh, my brother George was then an ecumenical chaplain in, uh, in Canberra, so he had to assist that and he would have known Chris and other people in Canberra. Um, uh, but in recent years, I was very well aware of uh, Peter's work to keep in touch with SCM friends in Melbourne. Uh, it was tremendous to see how he uh, kept in touch with people. I saw him uh, uh, just two or three years ago at his unit um, with Christine in Q um, and with the ward drawers at that stage. Yes, a highly intelligent person who gave a lot to the movement, I'm sure. Oh, thank well, you. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks very much, Janet. Uh, Cherry Collins, would you like to say something? I think you missed out on the way through for technical yes. reasons. I'm sorry, I'm not using the usual technology and there were absolutely no buttons on the screen whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> to unmute with, but we think we've fixed it. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Yes. Um, like Margaret Bailen, and hello, Margaret, so lovely to see you. Um, I, I knew Peter uh, through his role as an educator because I was in teacher education as well as uh, in my early years in SCM as well. Um, and uh, he was really a shining light looking in science education. His interest was really in the extension of his social justice concerns. He was interested in, in making science relevant for all high school children, which is probably why he had that clash with elite science professors at the University of Melbourne that we heard about. Um, so um, he, he played a very important role in science teacher education and was a really a shining light at um, education conferences. Mm. Um, Helen Hill, joining us from Dili and um, technically challenged, I believe. So, so welcome. Look, yes, Sandy, it's so good to be here just at the very end of it. I'm sorry I've missed so much. I've had a shocking time trying to get in with Timor Telecom today. We are waiting for the fibre optic cable under the sea that the Australian government has promised, but uh, it hasn't come yet, so we're dependent on a very shaky system. Mm. I, I'm, I'm in Dilly, by the way. But, um, but um, look, Peter, I met Peter first when he came to Monash. I was a second year science student. Sorry, it's not science. I was a second year art student at Monash, uh, just getting the SCM back going again uh, with, with um, oh, he's not Don, Don Seaman's brother, actually, Jim. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And and I was a bit afraid of Peter, I must admit, because he was as, as a chemistry professor and I just failed chemistry one twice at Melbourne University and been thrown out. And 
but I was very pleased that he was interested in education and and reading some stuff about Peter lately, he does seem to be one of those people that could cross the the art science divide mm. Uh, mm. and was also, I met him, he was involved in the Labor Party. He lived at Blackburn near my my parents and we may even have been in the same ALP branch briefly and he was very much involved with the state aid issue. You know, people mm. may have discussed this already, that was keeping Labor out of, one of the issues keeping Labor out of power and he developed a system and I think we even had him give a talk at Monash about it that would really bring social justice into Commonwealth funding of education and avoid the sectarian dispute. That this. And, and similarly, he was a pioneer in the, the VCE, um, getting the, the science, the, the, way te- the way teaching and learning was done at the secondary school level, and also a pioneer of environmental education. And the reason I've been looking at some of this stuff lately and talking with Peter even because I currently am adv- was last year advising the minister in East Timor on the reform of secondary school. And it seems to me that looking at a lot of Peter's stuff and, and having a talk to him when I could, which wasn't sadly much in recent years, uh, he has a tremendous amount to offer in the way that, you know, maybe Australia or Victoria, particularly the VCE came into Victoria and, and he was a pioneer there. Uh, I stayed with him in in Queensland, with him and and Christine in Queensland once, Uh, went to a Labor Party women's conference up there and found, and we we attended the the church service of St Mary's in exile. He was always a pioneer in the the progressive Christian movement too. And, And along with Christine, as Christine's was a pioneer or still maybe still is in the in the women's movement and mm. and in the um, feminist movement within the, the uniting church uh, so I do have many memories even going to Phillip Island uh, of of uh, Peter and, and Christine and the big impact that Peter had across different generations of the SCM not just his own generation and I think that was fairly outstanding and it is very sad that He's no longer with us and uh, best wishes to Rachel and Christine and, and the family because, uh, you know, he was really a special person. Thank you, Helen. Yeah. Uh, Coralie Ling, welcome. <laughs> Are you there, Coralie? Just a name, perhaps. Um, I haven't had any other chat messages about anyone wishing to speak. Does anyone else wish to say anything? Unmute yourself and start, please. Yes, please. Mandy here. Yep. Look, one just beautiful example that probably nobody knows about because they were so generous but also quiet about their generosity. Uh, when I was working in the Philippines in the early 80s, I remember that the SCM Philippines was really chuffed when a very generous solidarity donation was sent by Peter and Christine to the SCM Philippines. Mm-hmm. So nobody in Australia probably knows about that. Maybe their family don't even know, but they were lovely and generous in so many ways, and that was one of them. Thanks, Mandy. Good story. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Is there anyone else who, who needs to speak? Uh, Derek. Yep. Uh, just adding to what um, Ed Carter said, um, I remember uh, Peter giving a uh, lunchtime lecture at Melbourne University, it must have been about 1966 on state aid issue. He had this idea that um, state aid to non-government schools should be on condition that those schools became more incorporated into the uh, public system Mm. uh, model you have in some countries Mm. such as New Zealand, the Netherlands and so on. It was a very high quality lecture and um, subsequently it was published in The Catholic Worker. And also from that era, um, I recently came across a program card for the uh, Melbourne University branch. Very impressive program, I must say, uh, with all due modesty. But um, (laughs) I noticed there was a uh, worship service for the Faculty of Science. In those days, SCM could have worship services for the different faculties. And the speaker was none other than... Peter Fencham. Um, and then 
Yeah. If we want to go back to Peter's student days, that's an Andrews. He told me a good story uh, recently about um, being in a maths lecture in 1945. Uh, must have been a first year student. Um, and someone burst in to say uh, Japan had surrendered. Uh, the lecturer was Professor Cherry, and he said um, to the students, well, do you want to continue or not? <laughs> so you know what the answer was, and then they all um, streamed out across the Swanson Street onto the trams, and uh, one of the highlights was that the tram drivers were letting the students um, have turns of driving the tram. So they all went down to uh, Flinders Street for the... Um, <laughs> for the occasion. They didn't have so much OH&S back then. Mm. Thanks, Derek. Is there one more? Uh, Margaret? I, I, this is a rather personal story, but for me, the loveliest thing that used to happen to me with Peter and Christine was, because uh, I've spent been in Canberra since 1970, as, as well as having a place on the south coast where my parents were, which I then was later. And the, it was this hospitality thing where it wouldn't be unusual to have a telephone call in the morning from Peter or Christine saying, I'm coming up for a conference in, in Canberra this, this afternoon, would, would I be able to have a bed? And of course they could because mm -hmm. I'd grown up never having a place where I lived where there wasn't a bed in virtually every room because I, you know, I went to Europe in the 50s and that's where it was in Germany. Mm -hmm. And just last week's, it's the first time I've ever had the van in my living room taken away. <laughs> and I thought, oh dear, I feel a bit bereft. But it was the same with them mm -hmm. that I could, I usually didn't call up on the actual day, but whenever I wanted to, somewhere to stay, it was just so lovely to be able to go and stay and to know it was okay. I mean, that was the point, this, this unbelievable generosity mm. that was boundless. And I, I found myself right, boundless generosity, mm. boundless imagination, boundless love. And it was the same for Christine as well. And uh, it was just such, a privilege to to know them right, right through all, as long as I, of course, can remember easily nowadays. And I, I'm sorry that only that I didn't, haven't got to know members of the family personally to be able to see the, the, the men in the family um, and to, to see the reproduction. I love seeing reproduction in children and um, <laughs> it's a great thrill for me. And just an absolute thrill to see so many people I've known for so many years. I, I haven't felt so good for a long time. And I'm getting a bit old these days, so it's very welcome, I can tell you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank Margaret. You. Thank, thank you very much. Everyone. I think we, we, all, we all feel that sense of connection, and thank you for that, and, and the generosity and hospitality. Thank you. Um, I'd, I'd now I'll call on Rachel. I just wanted to say, We'll have a bed on the floor. Can can manage beds on the floor. We can do that. Yeah. Uh, Rachel Fincham, would you like to speak at this point? Yeah. Uh, oh, thank you very much. And I haven't really prepared anything, but I sort of thought maybe three things would be quite interesting. First of all, I guess as family members, I think all of us uh, feel touched by the SCM, and obviously having. Dad, he's our dad, you know, he's a dad, he's our father, you, you live with the inevitability of the parents that you happen to have. So, mm -hmm. but I guess we also know that we've always shared our dad with lots of other people and lots of other passions and commitments in his life. Um, and just thinking back myself to SEM connections, you know, the joy of the caftan, I'd have to say, dad in a caftan <laughs> in the 70s, and, um, attempting to grow his fairly ordinary hair, which we've all inherited, and mum's fairly ordinary hair, long, just sort of shoulder length, um, and kind of, 
intelligent conversation over dinner that was, ha you know, that probably taught my father to cook, you know, because he would be at Chum Creek and everyone would cut, cut vegetables and part of, be part of the action. So I think, you know, lots of very, and also playing games, playing adult games into the night or in the afternoon. So some of those very strong memories for me and maybe other members of the family around the SEM as this, um, extended family community that we could partake in uh, not so much maybe in the in the in the debates that you were having but certainly in that sense of a, a of a complex and multi-layered and generous um, social community um, so that's one thing I'd like to say and and then is the other is just um, before he died he was Getting, he was very well organized for everything about the end of his life. Um, he didn't really want to die before mum. He was determined to, I think, look after her all of his life and care for her, but it was not to be. So he had to come to terms with um, just the last six to eight months, his diminishing power and what power he had. Um, but part of that was also preparing himself for um, leaving things behind. And so he wrote something about what he thought God was. And I think I might just send it to you, Sandy. It's just Thank a you. short piece of writing Thank you. Um, that he wanted to have. Um, we read it actually at his very small private funeral, but um, he wanted it to be shared with other people. And of course, his idea of God was very much about um, a God in the world and work in the world, mm -hmm. not a God in any abstract sense. Um, but I think the other thing that, you know, just reflecting on the, the sort of centrality of his, you know, evolution as a Christian or a working Christian was um, in his later years, he often talked about the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and he would talk about the Holy Spirit sometimes when it was just, you know, that he'd been reading something and then two days later, Helen Hill might ring him up or, you know, or he'd get a message on an email um, or, you know, something wonderful would happen with one of his grandchildren and they would have, have a certain kind of experience. So his, his vision of this work, the, the Holy Spirit, I think, started to become, you know, for me, something very new in his repertoire of what he felt um, was the ways in which things moved mysteriously, that there were things that happened mysteriously mm. um, mm. and that we sometimes can't always be in control of those um, yeah, acts of generosity or reconnection or um, some kind of social transformation that takes place, you know, that, you know, you're, you've been conscious of working towards something and then maybe like the Uluru Statement, you know, th things start to coalesce and there's some sort of sense of a transformative power. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be just sort of a... a uh, and as I say, quite often he would say to me, that's the Holy Spirit. And I say, okay, Dad, it's the Holy <laughs> Spirit. You know? um, and um, so that's the second thing. And then finally, I, I just would like to reflect on something that came up from when you were talking earlier. I think, Sandy, you raised this. But Patrick and I um, were with him as he passed away. And we went a couple of days later um, to, in fact, after the funeral um, which was on a Friday and we went back to the room that he'd had at Karana and obviously we'd had a very full day but we felt also you know it was a moment of celebration and we were very connected to the close family members who were able to be present and we also knew dad was happy to die he knew he wanted to die and he was ready to go so we felt a sense of resolution but we went back to the room and um, Patrick might want to just add to this, but we couldn't barely get from the front door of Karana into his room, in the room, out of the room, without all of the staff coming to speak to us. And I don't know how many of you have had much to do with aged care centres, but of course they are peopled by the peoples of the world. You know, they are... <laughs> Nigerians, they are Koreans, they are Nepalese, they are Filipino. Um, and, you know, over the time that I've been visiting, of course, I've got to know them as well and, and you know, greet them as I go through. But 
obviously dad had done more than greet them. So many of them wanted to tell us that he really listened to them, that he always remembered who they were, mm -hmm. that he knew what country they'd come from. He knew, often had visited those countries, I might add, and so could ask them very specific things. He, he was interested in political changes that were taking place in Nepal or in Thailand. Mm -hmm. and, um, and at the same time, they would ask him for advice, you know, so even the um, Indian uh, nurse who was hoping to become a nurse educator was picking dad's brains about what it was to become a, a better educator, a nurse educator. He was doing training as a nurse educator. Mm -hmm. And Patrick and I just, um, just were overwhelmed with this sense that the, that the people in the nursing home who we felt had cared for dad had felt that he valued them as people, not just as carers, and mm. what that meant to them in terms of their dignity. Mm. So I think that's just something that probably, you know, you've, you've shared, but also I think is part of the work of the SCM is also just as Sandy said, maybe at the beginning, is that constant uh, receptivity to the, to, the, to the life of others and how mm. you make small differences in the day-to-day -day in changing the world. So those are a couple of things I'd like to say. And, and maybe just, you know, to conclude, I mean, um, please also, all of you, you've reflected on dad, but I think also um, how much you also all meant to dad throughout his life. I mean, he, he, he valued his friendships immensely and, um, you know, wanted, he, he needed you in his world as much as maybe you needed to him in, in his. Yeah, well, thank you. Thanks very much, Rachel. Thank you for that. Sandy, just to, just to add to that. Um, Sure. Just just to round out the point about the staff at Karana who would who were generally grieving and uh, could see a, a looming hole in their work experience from the from the loss of dad and from dad not being here. So just to emphasize that point. Um, but just to also recall my encounter with the SCM and seeing dad in a totally different mode. I think it was the 1972 Ballarat conference. And there's a photo of him and I have to, I hope we can dig it out at some point because he's in a white gown. He's holding a staff with a, a fox head <laughs> on it. And, and he's singing terribly because he always did, but he was singing Lord of the Dance. <laughs> and I can vividly <laughs> recall that as a six year old or eight year old, however old I was. Um, and there is a photo of him captured in that moment. So, from um, uh, you know sharing stories uh, with the staff at Karana and really caring for them from that to that earlier memory of him in the caftan and the white gown, um, he, he he rode the gamut. <laughs> uh, thank you for thank you for that, Patrick. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Does Rod or Mark, would you like to say anything? Um, I'd like to just say something briefly. First of all, uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. I really love hearing uh, people who perhaps. I don't have as much contact with or had uh, experiences of dad that are not ones that we're sort of well familiar with, um, you know, because it just adds to our picture of what dad did and who he was and, um, you know, just a little bit more about him, you know, finding out things that you just didn't know. Um, uh, thanks for Derek for that story. I love the story of the students driving the tram because you sort of couldn't do it today, no matter what happened. Uh, it's just fantastic stories like that. Uh, and I also enjoyed Margaret's story about visiting and uh, I'd just sort of add my own bit to that. I had an a American friend in Adelaide who was a Rotary student. So he was in Adelaide and he was going to Melbourne for some conference or something. Uh, and I said, oh, well, you know, I stay at my parents' place. Uh, and, you know, I called up my parents and said, can Paul stay? And as all of my brothers and sisters would know, that we saw a lot of people come and stay at various times in various ways. Uh, so there was a lot of traffic through the house. But my um, friend, uh, Paul, was kind of amazed that uh, when you stay at my parents' place, what that meant was you know where the key is and you can go and let yourself in. And, um, you know, <laughs> just because my friend said that uh, you could stay at their place didn't mean they'd even be there. Uh, so, in other words, you're welcome to come, but the carpet, red carpet wouldn't necessarily be rolled out 
And uh, it might mean that you're actually in an empty house by yourself and help yourself to the fridge and the cupboard and what have you, and there's your bed. Uh, and you know where the key's hidden, so just go and open the door and away you go. So hmm. um, that was the that was the rules of the game. Yes, you could stay, but we're not uh, we're not um, it's not five star catering, that's for sure. Um, and yeah, my friend Paul still reminds me of that. You know, forty years later, that was back in the nineteen eighties. He still reminds me about oh where the key was hidden because he had that uh, very highly valued knowledge. Uh, so look, I don't really want to say too much more. I will just say uh, at our funeral, we've said a lot of uh, uplifting and sort of memorable things about dad, but we also um, at our funeral uh, had a bit of amusement at his uh, expense, uh, just sort of dwelling on some of his weaknesses. And I think Pat touched on it. Uh, probably uh, a fairly total lack of musical aptitude was uh, one of his uh, weaknesses. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we had a bit of fun at the funeral just talking about some of those things as well. Uh, but, yeah, certainly thanks to everyone for participating today. We've, we've really, uh, I've really enjoyed it. And it's really good to hear about some of the other experiences that um, people have had because it just adds to my knowledge uh, of my father. So that's yeah. probably it. Thank you, Mark. Thanks very much. Uh, Rod, did you want to say anything? <clears throat> Uh, Rod, <laughs> Rod's either gone to sleep or uh, isn't there. <clears throat> I think we're ready to have the closing prayer and I'll ask Robbie Chulip to lead us in prayer. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, loving, gracious God. We come together as one family through the Australian Student Christian Movement. We bring those of us here today together with our memories of those who've gone before us and in particular, uh, memories of Professor Peter Fensham and Christine Fensham, who's still with us. We give thanks for how Peter has revealed the grace of God in Christ. Help us, Lord, to follow the example of your saints in light. Bring us to the fullness of your eternal joy. Through the ASCM, we celebrate an active, open, ecumenical and critical Christian faith, seeing Christ as our inspiration for action, for peace and justice in the world. We celebrate how Peter lived and led these values of the ASCM, directing our steps in the way of Christ, opening our eyes to the truth, inspiring our hearts by witness and strengthening our will and devotion. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. I think we can turn the recording off at this point. Thank you.